long time away. Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. I have the honour of interviewing the phenomenal Sonia Driver, the founder of EcoTan, Australia's first certified organic natural tanner, which took the tanning world by storm. Sonia's story is full of challenge, resilience, perseverance and inspiration. Through Sonia's challenges, she has managed to create a thriving business with amazing natural toxic free products that are good for people, the planet, and the animals. And I love this quote, Sonia, uh, that I saw on your website. And it goes like this, I want to encourage women that no matter how dark your world turns, never give up and know you are worthy, strong, and have value. I absolutely love that. So welcome, Sonia Driver. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so through it. And I'm going to pre-frame this because I think you've told me about a million times before our interview that there may be some swearing. So if anyone's listening to the podcast in their car with the kiddies, they yes. can either put some earphones on. <laughs> and I'm not sure if the swearing is going to come from Sonia or me. So it, it will probably come at one stage. So uh, thank you, Sonia, for giving your time today. I'm really honoured. And uh, as you know, I am a huge huge fan of your products. Uh, it took me a while actually to get into natural products. I think I was, you know, it took me a while to be educated. And yeah. it was only until I found out that some of the products that I was using on my son, he's now 22, but as a baby that was so toxic that I was, I was actually quite angry. I was like, shit, I didn't know that this stuff was in products and I'm, and I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing and uh, putting them on my baby. So I'm really thrilled that you've created some amazing products that are natural and I absolutely love them. Um, so thank you for that. No worries. Yeah, see, that, that's the marketing machine. I think everybody was brainwashed, um, yeah. you know, to not to look at ingredients. You know, they'll put up a picture of lavender and talk about one one little tiny bit of ingredient and then we just assume that it's all okay and like some of those products baby products that you know we've been using for decades i mean some of them have been taken off the market now because they're known carcinogenics yeah like, so it's just ridiculous it's ridiculous but i don't know why but it, i've always known and always had the instinct and always knew i don't know how though yeah. But I just always did. So I didn't use them on my babies ever because I just knew this is bullshit. And I, I don't know, I've always looked at ingredients. I think I was talking to a friend today um, and she's a doctor actually. She was talking about her daughter wants to be become a uh, chemist. And um, she said she's like you, Sonia. She automatically just reads ingredients. I, I think I've got a um, really good nose for bullshit. I've got, yeah. a, I've, as a kid, I've had a bullshit radar. You know, people walk into the room and I'll sense, I sense the energy and I don't know. So anyway, I'm, look, I'm off on a tangent. <laughs> so let's go, let's go, bring it on. <laughs> so tell me, Sonia, how did you, and I know a bit of your story, but tell me where it all began. Um, so basically it was about 10 years ago. Um, my sister had a, she was 30 at the time, had a melanoma on her arm. So she had to have um, like nine inches taken um, from tissue and around her arm. She had left a nasty scar. And it was around Christmas time and she was, she was so paranoid of the sun then. And she had two little girls that, you know, she was driving with gloves and really um, sun conscious. And, but then, then also really white and feeling. And I said, oh, look, my beauty therapist said that, that you know, having spray tans is 99% natural, the one that she uses. Yeah. Um, and then I said, but let me just check the ingredients, you know, because even though I hear, oh, it's 99% natural, I'm like, hmm, because I've got a bullshit radar, give, give me the ingredients. So I just looked at the ingredients and this was on a particular tan that was quite big at the time and it was um, like 13 ingredients and only one of them was in fact natural and wow. all the rest had, were, you know, ah. Oh, Lots of lots of rubbish in it, and um, so that's how it started. Oh my god! 
big, you know, big tan, um, all this sort of, that's what, you know, this sort of stuff. So I think my anger propelled me little bits, um, natural counterpart ingredients and mixing it in my little kitchen and all that sort of stuff. So that's how it started. In my tiny little kitchen with me mixing. And I bought all my lab equipment from eBay. And I still have my lab equipment. I can't wow. get rid of it. And I'm a minimalist. I hate hoarding, but I just can't seem to get rid of it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And so with that, how did you know even where to start? Like, I know my husband, I, I laugh at my husband because I can tell you, he's said so many times, I've got this idea for a product. And I reckon it's, we've been together for over 30 years and he's, he's never done anything with all his ideas because it's like, how do you even freaking start? So how did you know where to start? Um, how did I know where to start? Well, first of all, I made up my mind that I was going to do it. So yeah. that's, the, that's, that's the thing. So idea is one thing. And then taking an idea and actually do it and knowing that you're going to fail and hit roadblocks every single day. It was bloody hard, right? Bloody hard. And, I, you know, so I just kept persisting, basically. And I just kept um, joining um, different forums and sort of, I don't know, teaching myself, I suppose. But having said that, I feel like I had an internal instinct and I already sort of knew and I can't explain why. I just did. I'm a hairdresser by trade. I saw, and I'm also a really great cook, and I never use recipes. I just understand. I don't know. I just understood emulsifiers and I understand skin. I just know. I don't know. I just basically had some sort of knowing. It's like you know, people that are, my husband can play um, the piano or musical instru instruments by ear. Like, I have a hell. But he'll just write a song. I go, where is that coming from? How do you know what to touch? Because I have not got that in me at all. And he goes, I don't know. It's just so, just one, you know, it's just a little gift I have. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not amazing. I have chemists now, but I, I, I had enough, you know. Yeah. How did you, so it, it's so amazing with, with when you started your business. What were the biggest challenges that you had starting out? Did you, had you had a business before? Or was this your first one? No, um, I had a hairdressing business actually when I was 19 before I started flying. Had my own salon. Um, the day I finished my apprenticeship, I opened my salon. So I feel like I've always been a little bit of a, a go-getter and an entrepreneur and I had like full stuff immediately at the age of um, 19. Um, uh, God, if, honest to God, every single day there's challenges. Yeah. So it's about learning how to deal with stress and how to overcome it and um, push through, I suppose. For me, it was because I wasn't a chemist. I was trying to teach myself to be a chemist. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's a lot that goes into making a product. It's got to, you know, have some shelf life. Um, it's, it's, you know, bacteria testing. There's so much shit that I... You know, so I only basically did my spray tan solutions from home and then I had to find, employ chemists to help me because that was the level of my, you know. And even then, it was sticky but a fantastic colour. So, I, you know, I, I, I know I outsourced. I got people to help me in areas when I couldn't take it any further. But I'm also very good at sales and marketing. So I've really um, concentrated on my strengths, right? So mm -hmm. I would sit in my daughter's bedroom and bring up, um, you know, stores and get, uh, you know, so I sort of had my hand in a bit of everything, to be honest, in the beginning. Yeah. What, what have been, what, is, what's, what have you been most proud of with your brand? Um, probably my team. I know it sounds wanky, but probably my team. Um, I'm quite good at reading character and, you know, like the passion behind my team um, is incredible. So 
yeah, we, we all sort of have the same goal and that is we're very much a give back company. And that sounds like a way we've just started our own foundation, but we've never, ever stopped. Like we'll bring, you know, homeless people here and we'll say, okay, no one going to the bathrooms, they're having a shower or whatever. So everyone's on the, got the same sort of heart on the lookout to do good. Um, so I'm just, I'm sort of just really proud of my circle because everyone's got the same good heart and we're not money focused. Even though we need to make money to help others, it's not so, I mean, I never go out for ladies' lunches and I've got a huge, huge network and I'm always getting invited to speak and do all that. No, I'd just rather work my ass off. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, I don't know. Have I gone off track? I go oh, off yeah, track. you're right I, on track. <laughs> am I? Okay, because I do think I am self-diagnosed as ADHD, <laughs> but I don't want medication because it's working for me. <laughs> I'm with Just you. Just not for my kids, but it's working for me. I love it. Um, yeah. And you, I know that you were in, uh, was, it, was it East Timor? Oh, yeah, I've been in East Timor, been in Romania. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got lots of projects, we call them, underway. Yeah. Yeah. And what is your foundation that you're, you're having? Um, so it's a not for profit foundation. It's basically. Um, it's a grassroots one. So if we see, like, for instance, a couple of weeks ago, I saw this homeless man with a dog and I've been chatting to him. Now, he is so fucking beautiful, yeah. fucking beautiful bar. And everyone did, it was fucking freezing. And I thought, no bastard is even, you know, all these people that wear the I'm kind, be kind. Bullshit. You are not kind if you are not doing anything. If you fucking wear a T-shirt saying be kind, it doesn't make you fucking kind, people. Yeah. Not saying, look at me, I'm kind, but I'm telling you now, I'm sick of people thinking they're kind. I go, oh, yeah. I really want to be done. Because co being kind comes at a cost. It costs you either money, your yeah. time, your energy. It costs you something. Most people don't want to be inconvenienced or for it to cost them something. So most people are not fucking kind. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm over the fucking kind people, the pretenders of this world. Yeah. And I think too with social media... With social media, Sonia, what I found, what I found too is that I remember doing a post ages ago, and I said to I said to people because I was so sick of people going like promoting that they've done. You know, it's like yeah. oh, I saw this homeless person and I bought them a sandwich. Like that's great, but you don't have to put it on social media, take a photo of it. You, do you know what I mean? And yeah, I, I know. Yeah, there's a big I, um, move at the moment called No White, no, what, yeah, no right. white Saviour. Yeah. I, I've been a troll for it because I'm pretending to be a white saviour apparently. But I don't even put half the shit on. No one even knows the shit that we do. But occasionally, because we've got this foundation, we're trying to encourage others and show the foundation. So basically the foundation is, so if you see the homeless man, you're able with the foundation, we're able to get him, um, help him, you know, get him shelter, look up yeah. the animal, make sure it's warm. For, so that's what we're doing. So it's yeah. like a grassroots and it could be at the moment we've got another project. It's about overcoming poverty and building jobs which is really a passion of mine seeing women in business people in business because then you know you're teaching them how to sustain their life basically so not just giving 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 so um another one i've got the moment in india where um women that live in a slum in india and so because of the caste system it's very difficult for, even if they're a fantastic entrepreneur for them to break out of that because of cultural discrimination yeah. so um, we're actually, I'm really, really excited. Um, I've got, I've got a friend over there. It's really weird. He's a Hare Krishna. I've got a miracle school. I'm a Christian. We don't give a shit. We just work together. He's got a free school for the slum kids for an education. Yeah. Now, um, we're starting uh, a business there, but we've already started it, where women were teaching women to sew and then making like beautiful tote bags and all different stuff and getting paid above the award for India and they have a career. So it, they're fighting their own poverty and getting out of abusive relationships. Whatever their situation is, we are create, giving them, you know, some, a purpose and, you know, letting them have a career and some sort of esteem and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. that's what our foundation's about. And that's really um, the, at the core of Eco Tan, at the core of what I'm about. And so it all comes down from the top. So because that's what I'm about, my tribe, my team, I come under that and we're in that together. 
Yeah, so that's I'm really excited about that. I love that. And I, you know, I see that in it's so interesting because I went onto your podcast and I listened to a few of your podcasts. I listened to one with a lady, I think her name was Simone, in regards to helping people. Oh uh, yes, the sanctuary. She's a legend. Yeah. Yeah. And I could see, I could hear the theme. And what I loved about it was it was so similar to my podcast because I've, I've got that scene too, particularly, you know, I've, I've interviewed people with domestic violence and stuff and uh, I really absolutely loved your podcast. So anyone that's listening, make sure you get on to Sonia's podcast. What was your, what was it called again? Uh, in, the in, the driver's driver's seat. Seat. in the driver's seat. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely love it. So in regards to business, what would what would be your tips for someone starting out, particularly now with COVID? Mm -hmm. What would what would be your tips in in starting out a business right now? Okay, well, first of all, by the way, I have, have written a best selling book on how to start a business. And the a nudge. wonderful UK, the nudge. So I recommend getting that and not because I need to sell any more books because if they're in dimmicks, they're flying out the door, but it's a really simple breakdown of how to start your business and it's a reference book. So you go back to it. But um, first of all, check your foundation. If you're wanting to do it for money, you will fail. And because money goes, money comes, money goes, money goes a lot, especially when you're starting out. So it's not enough to keep you going because you'll always be chasing your money. So first of all, check your foundation and then be careful who you listen to. So many people listen to people that aren't fucking successful. Like, what the fuck are you listening to that person for? Yeah. Oh my God. You know, like they've had 55 fucking failed businesses and you're listening to them. So yeah. be careful. So look at the people around you. Um, trust, your, trust your gut feeling is always, trust, trust your gut feeling. Do everything with a good heart. Even if it's that, don't take the easy road, take the hard road. The hard road is the effort determines the result. Yeah. Most people, when it's a dry season, when it's not going well, most people don't have um, the determination or the fortitude to push through that, right? No, yeah. you're going to hit walls continuously, uh, every day, in fact. And it's you just having to push them, push through. Yeah. There's a lot of tips there. Yeah, there is. I love it. I love it. So I do not. The most important thing, the biggest mistake you can make is the number one thing. Don't overcapitalize. So don't borrow money. So before you start your business, you do, you're already, you know, on the back foot. So forget it. Don't just start organically small and grow it. It yeah. has to come from a place of passion, something you're passionate about, something you're interested in, and you need to learn how to make that commercial. That's what, that's how to start a business. Love that. So did you have any mentors in your journey in business, Sonia? I didn't really. Yeah. Do you know what? I, 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 I've mentored a few people. I can't do that anymore because I did go through a stage of mentoring quite a lot of people and it was great. That's why I wrote The Nudge, but it gets too many people come at me. Um, not really, but I was very in tune to... To listening to the wise people any I think I was too busy hustling plus I had two small kids to have time to even look sideways yeah you know I just sort of the good thing about me is I trusted my gut and I was absolutely terrified and I had no confidence do not wait to be confident there is no such thing as confidence do it anyway fear feel the fear and do it anyway so um not really, but, you know, I've got wise people around me and I just, if, if I hear something that resonated with me, I'd bury that and I'd, I'd remember that. So I, I was sort of gathering, you know, little tidbits. And I, even today I remember things that somebody would say to me from the first, and I go, yeah, that's the truth. Or if I hear something else and I go, no, I like that person, but that's not correct. That's bullshit. But I wouldn't tell them that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how has um how's COVID affected your business? Yeah, it's been fantastic for my business. Yes, yeah. I think it's been fantastic for um um all online businesses really. To be honest, because people can't go to the stores, it hasn't been good for my wholesalers. Um, we're terrified because you know one really knows, but no, it has been yeah quite good. Yeah. It's embarrassing to say, like, I, I, you almost feel a sense of guilt because such yeah. a horrific thing and, you know, affecting the economy. But 
I'm grateful that, you know, because I also have 45 staff. So I do feel the burden of they need to get their wages and pay their mortgages, look after their families and kids and everybody else. So um, yeah. thank God it's been kind so far. Yeah, yeah. So with, with your um, products, I love this message too that I saw on your website. It says, check your labels read ingredients, do your research, practice sun safety and beware, beware of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it sums, sums you up so, so much. And I think I said to you before we started, I, you know, some people might say, oh, you've got lots of, you know, I use your products and you go, yeah, yeah, right, whatever. But I absolutely love your products. Now, this isn't a commercial, but it could be. <laughs> so I got it. Pay your way up, pay your way up. <laughs> I got out all my products and my husband's like, what the freak? How many products have you got? Uh, but I have to say, I absolutely love your products. Uh, and I, I've got like, uh, this is amazing. What is it? Your gel cleanser. Oh, cleanser, sorry. You're wrong. Like, oh my God, I know. Like the, I, I'm going away on the weekend and I'm take, that's good. That's my body wash, my cleanser, my husband, it's everything. Well, I love the smell, but I've got one in my shower and then I have one in my, um, underneath my sink too, because I yeah, just yeah. use it every day in my shower and then this beautiful... The toner, pineapple toner. And the thing for me is smells really important for me as well. So yeah. when I put it on, the smell is really uplifting. Um, What's well, organic pineapple? Most, most smell is synthetic and it's very highly toxic and really bad for women. Disrupts our hormones, gets migraines, can cause seizures. Most fragrances are extremely toxic, extremely toxic. Yeah. But mine are all actually just Mother Nature. And I've got your, this one. <laughs> oh my God, that's, that's the most sought after mask in the world, that one. I know, well, mine's nearly yeah. finished, so I'm going to have to get some more of that. So I love that mask. Then I've got your products with your tanning products. Can yeah. I tell you, years ago, I would never, I was so shit at tanning. <laughs> we went to, I remember using a, another product years ago. We went to Malaysia and I put it on before we left and I suddenly, it suddenly developed on the, on the plane <laughs> and <laughs> developing, <laughs> developing. And that, and because I just slapped it on, I had all these, you would have freaking laughed. I had all these white big masks. I've got photos of these masks. and I'm sitting on the plane and my friend's pissing herself laughing going what have you done and I had to <laughs> and it wouldn't come off like for the last for the days I've got me my bathers on and I've got these big patches oh my of my skin but that doesn't happen with yours yours is so amazing and same applications are important yeah face hand water that just gives you a beautiful soft glow you don't need to wear pants I've got that on I've got that it's on the today. Yeah, that's um, all ages. This yeah. is what I use for my scrub. Some it's of amazing. you guys will be listening um, and not seeing this video, but it's a pink Himalayan salt scrub. I absolutely love it. And I put it on dry. Yes, that's the key. I, I scrub that on my face. Is that right? Because I put yeah. it on my body. The whole body. Even in like people who've got um, dry scalp and dandruff, it's amazing in your scalp as well. It's, yeah. it's absolutely incredible salt and you know beautiful organic oils it's just it's the bomb it's really good for skin conditions um eczema um ingrained hairs yeah i got this too <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, outdoor. that is fantastic I, and this is those that are listening it's an organic outdoor spray and i cannot stand those awful sprays that you put on so that you know, you don't get bitten by mosquitoes and stuff. And yep. this has been a saviour when I've travelled. Yeah, that's the yeah, we love that. That's certified organic, that product. Um, of course, I've got your eye cream, but I will finish with my favourite, the Glory, Glory oil. oil. Let me tell you, this Glory Oil, I smother on. I'm so glad that you've got the bigger bottle now. Yes. <laughs> this is the smaller one. But I put that on my face and I put it on my hair, the ends of my hair. Yep. That is so amazing and it smells like nuts to me. Yeah, well, it's, it's organic seed seed yeah. oil. So it is like, it is from nuts. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. You so know? thank you for all of my because products. Because we're going to add anything. Absolutely, absolutely love it. She's missing that. She's not one. 
Yeah, coconut body milk is like I've your, had your that family's. Too. I've run out of that, so I'm getting that. Okay, that's a good one. And I'll tell you what else is um, a really good one. Um, the the um, your body wash, our coconut mint body wash in the shower. Yes, I've had that so, too. Yeah, I've had all of them. <laughs> So I'm like a commercial, sounding like a commercial. No, sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm just a passionate fan of the products. Um, is there any new products on the horizon? Yes, there is. Um, we've got two amazing serums, 100% active, coming out this year. Wow. So for skin and one for young, like all just troubled skin. So yeah. they're both coming out and that's going to be incredible. Both of them have got vitamin C. Um, we've got a beautiful new mask coming out in, a, wow. in about two or three weeks. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, which is amazing. I, I, can't, I won't go into details yet about the ingredients, but it's bright purple and it's phenomenal. Wow. Absolutely purple power. The ingredients will blow your mind. So that's exciting. Um, and we do have a couple of other little products on the back, but I can't tell you everything. I know, you can't tell me anything, everything. <laughs> yeah, I love it, I love it. Uh, as a business owner, what values do you live by? Um, always do the right thing. Yeah. The number one thing, do the right thing, even if you have to apologize, own up, don't throw anyone under the bus, um, do the right thing. I'm gonna ask my PA, what, what's one that you would say the company has or I have, but you, you see in me. Being genuine, like being a genuine person. Okay, be, be yourself. Bring, bring your real guy, bring yourself. Yeah. Be vulnerable too, yeah. like, you know? And owning, yeah, like you said, owning up when you've done something wrong. Owning up, because no one gets in trouble when you own up, but I, I don't like conflict. Yeah. But it's funny because people think I am, do you think that I'm a conflict person? But it's just I'm a straight shooter. Straight shooter, yeah. no filter. You know, no, so just bring yourself, be safe. I want everyone to feel, you know, obviously our first thing is always do the right thing. And we're very generous, over the top generous. Yeah. I love that authenticity that you talk about because I'm, I'm a speaker coach, public speaking coach. So one of the things that I find, particularly with people in business and putting themselves out there is that they put this mask on and they try to be something that they're not. Like I love, and that's one thing I love about you. And I've I've watched what you've done for the last few years, actually. And you've been on my radar for a long time. I thought once I do a podcast, you're on my list uh, because you you were just. I love that no filter. I love that this is who you are. I love that, uh, and I think if more people did that, it's so freaking freeing because it takes a lot of effort to try and be someone that you're freaking not. It's because it's scary to show yourself, to be vulnerable, to yeah. not have a mask. It's, it's take, you really have to be brave to yeah. be yourself and let people judge you, whatever, love you, hate you, whatever. It's take, it, I'm not saying I'm, actually, I am brave to do that, but it, it does. It, it only takes brave people. And that's why business books are so shit, most of them. Yeah. I remember when I first started, I bought all the fucking business books. That people that write business books think, oh, I've got to sound really um, intellectual, and that I'm some. So they write like their like their mask is, and it doesn't help fucking anybody because it's so complicated, boring, and drawn out, and trying to use big words. And I thought, oh my god, let's just you know say it how it is and make it simple. It's not yeah. complicated, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just find it exhausting having to – I call them smiling tigers and I don't like them. I don't have them as, as in my circle as a friend. People that are too nice and you know, yeah. and you, you have to try to work out who they are and see behind their mask, even though I can very easily. I prefer not to have them in my – I'd rather have lunatics. I have a lot of friends that are complete fucking lunatics and I fucking love them. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> crazy shit that goes on i love that because yeah. you know it, it's it's exhausting with all these this you know fake crap out, out there you know yeah yeah and and of course when you're putting yourself out there there's that fear of judgment because you know what i say to my clients is there's going to be regardless there's going to be people yeah. that are going to love you and then there's going to be people that 
are not going to love you. And that's okay because you don't want to work with those people. Like I know from, from a service point of view, yeah. uh, my clients that, I, that uh, connect with me, it's so easy. But the yeah. ones that are hard work are the ones that, you know, yeah, yeah I, I want to get rid of those people. I want to attract the exactly. ones that are a connection. Yeah. To so, uh, yeah, you can only do that by being, you know, this is who you are, being that authentic self. Life's too short to try to be somebody. You know, you know I, I don't know. Magic happens when you're brave. You know, Brent Brown, she says something about um, unless you're in the arena getting your butt kicked yeah. every day, I don't want to hear your opinion. Yeah. Or your judgment or anything yeah. you have to say. And I, I'm, and I went, I love that saying because she's so fucking right. Yeah. I mean, isn't that true? Don't give me your opinion if you're just sitting behind, um, you know, your keyboard as a, as a warrior doing nothing with your life or too scared to show your face so you've got a, you know, some random cartoon as you, yeah. you know. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you're a coward. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, so I love the doers of the world because they've, they've harnessed, you know, they've harnessed their fear and they've gone out and done it. They've got an idea and they've actually had the courage to go and do it. You yeah, know? absolutely. So with your, you running your successful business, Sonia, how do you look after your mindset, your health, so that you're, you know, you're running, because, uh, you know, you're, you're balancing a lot of different things. How do you look after your mindset and your health? Well, I've always said I suck at stress, which so it's always been my battle. But this yeah. morning, for instance, I did a um, just over five k run, you know. And yeah. so I, I, I do like to run. Not that I'm super fit, shit, because I eat and drink too much as well, right? So yeah. I'm not a moderate person, um, yeah. but I'd love to run. It's just, you got to find what you love. You can't, yeah. you know. I tried Pilates and yoga. I fucking hate Pilates and yoga. I do too. <laughs> what the hell? And I've tried all of them and everyone goes, oh, Sonia, you really need to meditate. You really need yoga. It was made for you. No, it, it sucks. I hate it. It's shit. But yeah. I love to run. But they don't get that. So you just got to find what makes you happy, what gives you yeah. a little bit of joy. So, you know, I run, I pray, I have faith. And like, so... Yeah. I generally pray in the shower, you know, and I've, I've created like a little altar. I don't have a religion, I'm not a, but I, I pray. And so generally I'll, you know, pray and whatever I want to do, listen to some really cool worship music. So spiritually, because not, we all um, neglect our spiritual health as well as our mental health and physical yeah. health. That's yeah. the big one. So I, I really try to tap into my, you know, just driving here from home today I was running late and I was praying in the car yeah. so prayer keeps me grounded running keeps my body okay drinking keeps <laughs> other I am a little bit of a drinker you know I always have to watch that you yeah. know not huge but you know I could easily have one or two glasses of wine every night but I try not to get into that habit but I mean you know <laughs> <laughs> Four or five nights a week, I'm having one or two. I'm already thinking about the two cocktails I'm having tonight. I'm going out to dinner with my husband. <laughs> I gave up alcohol, Sonia. Do you what? I gave up alcohol. We're going to have to end this podcast right now. I have zero in common with you. <laughs> uh-huh. Because I'm an all-in type of gal as well. I'm either all-in and I'm crazy at the best of times. So... <laughs> And down, you know, it, it sort of uh, lets me. I can't, I can't come down. I find coming down hard. Yeah, well, how do you come down now. How do you, you know? Well, it, it was actually a challenge at the start because I, I only did it for a short amount of time. I thought, I thought I'll just give it up for four weeks, and I realised how I was drawn to, to it so much so if i'd get home and i'd have a challenging day with the business i'd be like oh i want a glass of wine and i thought i and because i'm so much about mindset i thought hold on a minute that's controlling me yeah and yeah that connection i didn't like yeah I'm a that, bit it was that i'm like hold on a friggin minute this isn't going to control me and yeah. so that switched everything for me and i was the girl that would would be on social media going, it's one o'clock now. You know, that was me. And so my friends were like, what the freak? Even still 
people I haven't seen for ages are like, oh, we're going to catch up for a vino. And I'm like, well, I actually don't drink alcohol anymore. They're like, what the freak? <laughs> That's better for your health though. I wish, like I wish, wish I was you. <laughs> I have to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, yeah, it's been two years for me and I feel amazing. So um, really, honestly, congratulations, because that is really, really important. I, I do think as a, society, as a society, we all tend to drink too much. We, to, you know, we really, really do. There's an amazing woman in the UK that's actually got a blog and written a book. Um, she said that she was an alcoholic and she said, most of us are and we don't even know it. Yeah. And I'm to interview her on my podcast. Can't tell you her name because you'll pinch her first. So. <laughs> but yeah, she used to hang out with the Rolling Stokes, but she's really cool chick. But it's so true. It's very insightful. I know. It's one day, one day I'll be that person. And you learn about, you say about the culture, you learn so much about it because people will say, oh, you're not fun anymore then. Like it's like, so they link fun yeah. to alcohol or, you know, so it's, they think you people think you're strange and it's so interesting because it's only liquid but anyway um so yes i i i get you because i was there um yep. but i've shifted from that now um and i love i want to go back onto your podcast because i love your podcast too in the in the driver's seat with sonia driver what what's what have you got planned where did that come from how long have you had your podcast for when did you start that I've had it for about four months but oh my god i've had the most amazing amazing guests have. i've got some incredible i've got an incredible guest is it tomorrow and i'm interviewing tomorrow oh my god and also if you're listening to my podcast did you listen to the one with the, with the sex therapist yes i did what the i'm still in shock but but Seriously, my husband said he, that the neighbours call the police because they think he's having sex with a dead person. But, but, and then I, then, I, then I do that podcast. Was that mind-blowing? That's mind-blowing. <laughs> Any women going through menopause or most of us are really dysfunctional, have a dysfunctional sexual health or yeah. thoughts or shame or because we're not yeah. tall. I don't even know. We just have to come up with what sex is and how to do it, what we're supposed to feel about all that. But no one teaches us. So I just find her fascinating. And I follow her on Instagram and she's just so professional about anal sex or <laughs> some, or squirting and talks like this. And I was literally, I still fucking, Annie, my beautiful Annie's here wetting herself laughing. I couldn't, it was the only time I actually had no words for anything. I don't know what you mean. Does that, is that a real thing? I, I remember, thought, and when you're saying this, I remember listening to it because I went for my walk. I actually, this is, I know exactly where I was when I started listening to it. And my, and I realised that my mouth was like, <laughs> I was walking. I'm like, I'm, I don't think I'm the right person to be interviewing you. I, 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 I I'm a virgin, clearly. <laughs> I, I don't understand anything you're saying. What do you mean? Oh, I'm still traumatized. I think it's therapy. But um, I haven't tried anything she talked about because, wow, wow. <laughs> it sounds exhausting. And you've got to move, and I won't do anything kinky like moving. Absolutely not, Janelle. <laughs> Oh, but I, I, I love even just the theme of your different guests. I just love that. Um, and as I said, it reminds me of me because I really think through who I have on. And, and yeah. it's interesting. It, it, and I suppose it just tells people where my mindset is. Um, yeah. and, you know, I love you because you're so authentic, you're real, um, and I love your products. Um, I wouldn't have anyone on that I didn't believe in. And that's just, I'm just... That's just me. Yeah, why can't, be someone, yeah, yeah. Why can't be someone that you think's an arsewipe? I don't know. You just, <laughs> just, I just wouldn't do it unless it was yeah. me doing it to for other reasons. Um, yeah. But for me, it's I, about, I do get people's um, requests to come on, and it's just really strange. But unless I, and they're fascinating people, but if I don't feel it, it's not going to be a good podcast. And it's yeah. not about them. It's about our connection. Yeah. What the connection I, you know, like I can't interview people that are professional that are all that have a mask. It just yeah. doesn't work. 
I can't do that. I, I have to have the lunatics. I should rename it. <laughs> the lunatics. The lunatics. <laughs> um, yeah. I love it. So, um, yeah, that's an interesting people. Yeah. With, with your book, and I... It's, it's interesting you mentioned your book because I didn't know about your book until this morning. For some reason, I went on and I saw that you had this book, The Nudge, which I'm going yeah. to get, by the way. Um, tell me a little bit more about that because I think that's important for, for new people in business or even people that have already yeah. started in business. Well, it was because, um, as I said earlier, I was getting, I was mentoring a lot of people because, you know, I love, I want everybody to, I, I just love everybody and I want everybody to have their best life. So it's, yeah. it's not that I can't say no, it's just that I know how to do it. So I was mentoring a lot of people, but I also have kids, a husband, a dog, a huge business. So I was thinking, oh my God, and it's the same questions and I was doing the same, you know, my, with the whiteboard and mentor and I'd never charge money ever for mentoring people because that way I didn't have to censor myself. I could just really give them my honest opinion and blah, blah, blah. So, and I thought, oh, I can't, this it was getting too much. So I thought, I'm just going to write everything I teach in a book. And then I said, and, and the book's really cheap and it's really expensive because it's a high quality book. Um, like the, the paper and the, everything about the book is exquisite gold foil, all this stuff. So um, I thought I'll write in a book. So the next person says to me, can you mentor me? I'll say, buy my book, The Nudge, it costs you 20 bucks and yeah. it's a reference, you go back to it, takes you from step one, takes you through everything, um, it takes you through everything you need to start. So yeah. I get so many people inbox me about, you know, thanking me for that and it keeps you motivated and I share a lot of my stories of, you know, like one, one chapter's called Your Judas, it's about somebody in your life. You know, that obviously everyone has a Judas. Anyone listening, be very mindful of your Judas. Only your Judas can actually bring you harm. So it's somebody in your inner circle. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's not technical. My PA is saying to tell everyone it's not technical. It's really easy to follow. But so your Judas is somebody in your inner circle that will betray you. So don't give too much information to. Don't give too much yeah. of yourself away. Um, it's people that you don't would never pick to be your Judas. People yeah. that get jealous. They see a little bit of your success. And they go, oh, that dumbass. I could do that. So many of people have come along, yeah. with, even with big money, and I didn't have any money. Yeah. Um, you know, they can copy me or and so many of them have oh my god it's literally gone belly up yeah i watch i just watch and i go reap and sow reach reap yeah. and sow. so th i take you through all that so it's um not only is it it's a practical it i also try to feed your mental state as well because yeah. being in business really it's about more of your mental state really than than doing practical steps yeah i love that i i can't wait to read it because and that's happened to me um and i haven't even heard of someone writing about that in a business book maybe i have just haven't read the, that business book but i have not heard anyone talk about that that someone can be yeah. in your circle um and and for me yeah uh and i don't know about you sonia but for me i'm such an open book uh, and Thank I do, you. Quite yes. easy. so even yeah. though I, I do believe I'm a really good judge of character, I also can trust, like someone has to dis disprove their trust rather than, yeah. you know, tr prove their trust to me. And so yeah. for me, that's um, a real, I can't wait to read that chapter. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for talking yeah. about that. Cause I think that's a great one. <laughs> I'll buy all these business books for a really thing. I thought, you know. Yeah. When this is the true essence of, you know, what people go through. So I love, I love that. That's so great timing for me. So thank you. Uh, what's, what's your vision next for Ecotan? Um, definitely fo focusing on our foundation. So yeah. pouring more money into that and having a team just des designated for our foundation. So yeah. like just little things like, you know, I, my friend went traveling to Romania and saw this tiny woman digging for worms and she had six little kids and they, the Romania gets freezing. They literally just lived under a roof. There was no door, no water, no food, no, 
they shelter no bedding. They were sleeping on a pile, which I've seen videos of, but I've been there twice actually now to meet them, um, yeah. of, of rags with massive rats the girls were pulling out. They were sleeping on that, trying to huddle to keep warm. They wow. were just so, like it's poverty, it's so extreme. So, you know, I did, oh my God, I can do something just from Australia. So I um, had held a lunch at my house, invited all my friends, charged them, I can't remember, 150 bucks. Yeah. Gave them all lunch, whatever, lucky dog prizes. It was incredible. And I raised $11,000. I did it with a girlfriend. So grab a girlfriend. So her and I, we did this. We raised $11,000, my beautiful Kerry, and, um, you know, built a bathroom, got them running water, got them door, got them beds, got them basic needs. Um, so, you know, we can all do something. Yeah. We can all do something somebody and, and when you give you get and that's not why you should give but when you do and I feel like that's the reason I'm so successful because it's a spiritual law of the more yeah. that I'm giving out the more that you know I'm getting dumped with money it's piling on me baby close the door it's coming in it's coming in everywhere it's flooding in people but I think you've got a really great sense of gratitude as well yeah. Sonia, which I think is really important and I know that one thing that I do every day, I was talking to my son about this uh, this morning, actually, my son's also a Christian, and uh, one, uh, a book I read from Wayne Dyer years and years, yeah. and years ago, that he would say, before he gets out of bed, he, his words were something like, before I put my feet on the floor, yeah. I've already you know, thanked God for, exactly. for right. my life, for my breath, for... And, and I make that a practice. So every morning, well, most mornings, I will say that before I even put my feet on the floor. Absolutely. Before, before I go to bed. Yeah, before you reach for your phone. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's all those things that, you know, you're talking about the, the people in Romania that we just can so take for granted. And yeah. it puts all the you know, luxury things just to the side. It's like, I'm grateful for my health right now. I'm grateful for my breath. I'm grateful for being in a nice warm bed when yeah. one gets that. So I, I can really hear that from you, yeah. that gratitude yeah. shines through. Absolutely. I remember, like, it's like um, Wayne Dwyer, Louise Hayes, I was always yeah. Louise Hayes, and she's always been about gratitude, always. So I have, you know, even be grateful for your fridge, be grateful for everything. I am. I, I, gratitude absolutely does attract miracles, as they say, without a doubt. So, um, yeah, I, I, I do live by that myself. Yeah, and even challenging times for me in business, when I focus on what I'm grateful for, it always yeah. gets me... Changes. Yeah, absolutely i mean every day you know there's battles every single day it's never it's never going to be easy i think that's another thing even when you're successful and according to the figures i'm successful but mm -hmm. oh my god most people would not be able to fight the battles and with perseverance and the way that i and that's not giving myself any you know a rap but seriously you don't want it you know, it's exhausting i'm always like as you're, I'm talking to you, I've got a lawyer meeting tomorrow. Okay, yeah. you know, suing this one for trademark infringement. Did it, did it, make a call, make a call. You know, it's yeah. you get uh, decision fatigue, and there's always battles. You know that. That's what it is. It's never, never going to come easy. So also, I do have this saying, which is called success is overrated. Yeah. So being, you know, if that's what you're going for, it's not what you think it is. Yeah. You know, and the more successful you are, and the more money you have more responsibility the more stress the more it's you know i don't have a yacht i, I, I don't have a fancy lifestyle do i why don't i fix that <laughs> let's get on with that my pa is fired <laughs> what <am> I? <laughs> why am i sitting here in a two dollar mini vest by the way <laughs> but you look <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for sonia What's next for you? Oh, only God knows. Only God knows. I don't know, just definitely getting more into my foundation. I'm yeah. excited about that because that's what gives me joy is seeing people transform, seeing people, you know, be given back their life or giving a hand up, you know, not a hand out, a hand up, you know. Um, yeah. I love that. That just, that gives me life. So definitely spending some more time into my foundation. 
that's that's my next step i've always done it but now it's just formalized and i have more money to do even more stuff you know yeah. whether it's anybody it's anybody anything whatever whatever comes i'm in there you know with the domestic violence sanctuary or from romania or timor or india or anywhere in australia whatever it is you know yeah, yeah i love that so a lot of the listeners will want to follow you. So you're on Instagram, of course, and you're on um, Facebook. I do swear, uh, if you're going to follow my personal one, it's not <laughs> G, it's not a G. I think they've realised that by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Sonia Driver on Instagram and Eco Tam. And yes. I've got another one for Europe called Eco by Sonia Driver. Oh, awesome. And how do they get your products? I know, but how do they get your products? Uh, they can get it online at yeah. www.ecotan.com.au. Also, our full range is in Myers across Australia, if you're in Australia. Um, yeah, so we're, it's global. We're, we're virtually everywhere in the world, or mainly health food stores. Yeah, price um, line. Yeah, online, definitely. Online, definitely. Yeah. Um, beauty therapists, some holistic beauty therapists, health yeah. Uh, but the, but we do have a new website, so it's, yeah. yeah. Check that out, www.ecotan.com.au. <laughs> now we're going to have a break. <laughs> we're going to have wine because <laughs> I can take. All righty. Are you ready for JJ's rapid fire questions? Oh, yeah, go. Go, I love this. Okay. All righty. Hack to the heart. Okay. I'll be right. math. I can't do math. <laughs> Okay, something most people don't know about you. I was an um, international hostie. Air hostess? For many years. What's your favourite book other than your own? The Bible. Who would play you in a movie? Fucking someone wild. Um, who's really wild? Who would play me? Someone wild like Courtney Love or someone really wild. Courtney Love. <laughs> I'm going with Courtney Love. Courtney Love. What's one thing on your bucket list? Okay. Okay. I'm doing um, Italy with my husband. Beautiful. Love Italy. If you could trade lives with anyone for one day, who would it be and why? Who's really hot because then I want to be his wife and have um, like some crazy sex with him. No, no, that's not true, people. Um, that was my no filter. It slipped. Um, <laughs> who, who, who would that be? That's a really good question. Um, someone with a lot of fucking power. Probably the Prime Minister because I'd be making some changes in this country. <laughs> yeah, love it. <laughs> I'd be voting for you. Um, three words that describe you. A doer, doer, strong, compassionate. Love it. If you could have any five people, whether they're dead or alive, to have for dinner, who would you choose? I know it's supposed to be rapid, but I'm not into okay. I'm going Jesus. Now we need some entertainment. So um who in the life is dead? Not Michael Jackson. Who? I said not Michael Jackson. No, I said not. No, not Michael Jackson. Oh, she said not Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, definitely not Michael Jackson. Okay, so we've got Je we've got Jesus. Okay, I've got who else have I got? I've got Gandhi. I want Gandhi there. Um, I want Louise Hay there. That's good. Um, oh, I want Lady Di there. Yeah. She'd wow, I want her there. Um, oh, I want Mother Teresa there as well. Beautiful. If you could have one superpower, what would you have? I would fly. Yeah. What TV sitcom family would you be a member of? <laughs> the modern family. The modern family. And what legacy do you want to be? This is the last one. What legacy do you want to be remembered for? Um, 
lifting others from poverty. I love that. A poverty buster. A poverty buster. Absolutely love that. Thank you so much, Sonia. This has been so much fun. I could listen to, I could talk to you for hours. Uh, I, could, I could bring you back to the dark side and we'd be drinking wine. <laughs> Don't play with me. <laughs> And we'll have to catch up next time I'm in Brisbane. Because you're in Brisbane, aren't you? The Gold Coast. Oh, the Gold Coast. Yeah, because I run my events in the Gold Coast and in Brizzy. So uh, I'd love to catch up with you if we get a chance. Absolutely. To next time I'm allowed to do my live events over there. Yes. Um, that would be I've fantastic. I've got a hand sanitizer. We'll spray that on everybody. Yeah, I've got a eucalyptus 100% natural freaking spray that I'm spraying everywhere okay. right now. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. Thank you for designing these beautiful, beautiful, amazing products uh, and uh, being an advocate for, for natural products because I think people don't, still people don't realise, I mean, it took me years, but still people don't realise how freaking toxic some products are and how bad they are for our health. And uh, you have designed some amazing, amazing products. So thank you so much for that. Uh, and I just love your authenticity and how you, your mission to help other people. So uh, thank you so much um, from me and from Bless. everyone else. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Janelle. Bye. See ya. Bye.